In this video, we will learn how to actually construct a probability distribution for a binomial random variable using Excel. Our end result will look like this table. This is the probability distribution right here for the random variable defined as X is the number of times we get heads in four flips of a fair coin. So remember, binomial random variables satisfy three characteristics. One, that there is a fixed number of trials, in this case, four times that we're going to flip the coin. Two, that there are only two possible outcomes per trial. So every time we flip the coin, there's only two things that could happen. We either get heads or we get tails. And three, um, we need independent trials with constant probability of success from trial to trial. So that means if I flip a head on the first flip, I'm still just as likely to get a heads on the next flip, and in both flips, the probability of a heads is the same. All right, so let's begin by, um, I'll just start from scratch so that you can see how all this comes to be. Okay, so first of all, we read what the random variable is, and we see that we're going to flip the coin four times. The probability of success is represented by lowercase p. So every single time we flip the coin, what probability do we have of getting heads if it's a fair coin? We know it's 0.5, 50-50 chance. And q is the probability of an unfavorable, unfavorable event, or in other words, a fail, failure, <laughs> goodness gracious. And we can also, calculate that as 1 minus p, because with binomial random variables, the probability of success and the probability of failure must add up to 1 because they're complementary and they cover, they cover all the possibilities. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and start thinking about all the possible numbers of successes that we could get. Since we know x is counting the number of times we get heads in four flips, how many times could we get heads? We could get heads zero times, right? We could get the all four flips land on tails. We could get heads one time where it lands on the first flip, the second flip, the third flip, or the fourth flip lands on heads. We could get exactly two successes where we have maybe heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, and so on. We could get three and then all the way up to four since we're doing four flips. We could get all four flips, heads, 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 heads. All right, so those are all the possible ways we could do it. And using the binomial probability formula in Excel, that's binome.dist, okay? And then we want to feed it the things that are listed here in, in order with commas in between. So notice that here I have this the number s, so that means the number of successes. Now we are representing the number of successes with x. x is recording the number of times we get heads. So we want to click on, or you can just type 0 if you want, but if you want to be able to copy this formula, you can click on the cell containing that first um, number of successes. So that was column A, row 8. It's a little bit covered up right now, but it's under there. Then comma. I want the number of trials. Now you could just type in four, or if you want, you can make it an absolute reference just by hitting your F4 key or putting in dollar signs. And then we want the probability of success in each trial. That's P. And again, we want to make that an absolute reference. And then finally, remember when we want the probability of an exact number of successes, then we say false for cumulative. So you can just double click there or you can type in the word false or you can do zero meaning false or one means true. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on false and press enter. So now this can be copied down. All right, so if you've done this successfully, then all your probabilities should add or sum up to one, okay? All right, so what's next? That's it, really. I mean, we've constructed the probability distribution here, and we can answer questions like, what's the probability of getting two heads in four flips? And that would be right here, corresponding to two successes. 
that's the probability of exactly two successes right there. Or what about two or fewer? Well, if we could just add up the probability of two successes plus the probability of one success plus the probability of zero successes because if we're saying two or fewer, favorable would be two or one or zero. And so remember with the word or, we use the addition rule. So we're just doing the addition rule right now. We're adding them up. And more than two is the complement of two or fewer. So I could just go one minus this and get my answer here, or I could sum up all the events that are more than three successes. So that would be these two, okay? Also, I can calculate two or fewer using the binome.distribution function, right? I can just type in the number of successes that I want to be equal to or less than would be two, comma, the number of trials here is four, comma, the probability of success in each trial is 0.5, comma, do I want it to be cumulative? This time I'm going to say yeah, okay? And so that's going to give me the same answer too. All right, we can look at one more example here. So now X is de defined as the number of times we roll a three when a six-sided fair die is rolled five times. I'm just going to assume it's fair. Okay, so let's get rid of all this, construct it from the ground up. All right, so N here is how many times we're going to roll the die. So we're going to roll five times. The probability of success in each trial is going to be the probability of rolling a three. So we know there's one side that has three dots and there's six sides. So one out of six. And the probability of, of not getting a three would be five out of six, right? Or to make it simpler, one minus P. Then let's think about all of the numbers of ways, the numbers of times we could roll a three with five rolls. So we could get zero successes, one, two, three, four, five, right? So anywhere from no successes at all up to all of the rolls being successful, right? Then we use our binome.dist. We say the number of successes and the number of successes is going to be, let me see if I can move this out of the way. I can't move this out of the way. That's a little bit irritating, but I can just type it in. So the number of successes for this row would be zero. So I'm going to refer to the cell A8, comma, then the number of trials, absolute reference, the probability of success, absolute reference, and false. I can just type it in or I can write zero and copy it down. Okay, check that they're adding up to one because that's helpful. It doesn't always 100% of the time catch any mistakes you make, but it will be one way that you can see if you're doing it right, All right? And once again, you will get your answers here, like the probability of exactly two successes right there, the probability of two or fewer successes right here, and the probability of two or more being, or excuse me, that should be, oh, I wrote two or more. So why don't we do that? Because before we just did more than two, which was complementary to two or fewer, but two or more um, would include two also. So there's overlap there. So then you should notice that these two do not add up to one and that's the way it should be. Okay, so that's how you do the construction using the binome.distribution formula. But it's important for you to also realize that it's using this formula to do that, right? So if we calculated the number of ways you could get zero successes using the combine formula, combin, it says the number comma number chosen. So the number is five success or five rolls, absolute reference, comma, the number of successes, zero. And so notice that there's only one way to get no successes, and that's if every single roll was not a three, right? So there's one way to do that. 
Similarly, there's only one way to get every single roll has a three. So five successes is five, absolute reference, comma, five, five choose five. Also gives us one, right? And then the number of combinations, the number of ways I could get one success is that one success could be the first roll or the second roll or the third roll or the fourth roll or the fifth roll. So I know the answer here should be five. And if I use combine with five absolute reference comma one, it's like choose the position of your success. There's five ways. And similarly, if you are going to have four successes, that means there's only one failure and that one failure has five different positions it could be in. So you should also get five here when you do combine five roles, absolute reference, comma, four successes. See that? And so then what about two, right? So the probability or com not the probability, we're not doing probability right now, we're just counting ways. Combine five absolute reference, comma, two successes, and finally combine five, six, five rolls, comma, three successes. All right, so now that we have all our combinations figured out, we want to know how many, uh, what's the probability of getting, say, zero successes? That would be if I got a success zero times. So that would be taking the probability of success and raising it to the power of zero. And if you are if you have some math knowledge, you know raising anything to the power of zero always gives you one. And how what would that be for your failures? That would be the probability of failure, F4. Uh, I don't think I did that right. Let me see. Did I do this one right? Let me do this again. So that would be the probability of success, F4, absolute reference, to the power of X, right? And for the probability of my failures, right, Q to the power of N minus X. In other words, I'm taking my probability of failure and making that an absolute reference and then raising it to the power of whatever is left. So if I haven't had any successes, then I still have five trials in which I could have a failure, right? Or if we want to make it copyable, we can do an absolute reference minus one, or minus x, I meant to say, minus x. And so if I do it that way, these are copyable. And now I want to show you how if I insert some cells here and I want to see if I can get the probability of X by multiplying those three values notice that it matches these two match so this one I used binome.dist this one I used the mathematical formula by calculating each piece individually and then multiplying them all together. And then when I copy this down, again, you see all of them will match if I've done it right. All right, so that concludes how to construct a binomial probability distribution with Excel.